Christ's day. Did they not play the fool with their eternal destiny? Yes, they did. In Matthew 23, verses 37 and 38, listen to the Lord Jesus Christ as he addresses these Jews during his time of ministry. He said, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them that were sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a chicken gathers her, even as a hen gathers her chickens under her wings, and you would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. The Jews had every opportunity, they had every reason to believe that Jesus Christ was the Messiah that God had promised in the Old Testament. <coughs> but they did everything they could to kill him. Finally, they succeeded in getting uh, power to have him crucified. But during the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ on earth, <coughs> on every opportunity the Jews had, they played the fool with their eternal destiny. Well, you say, Brother Hines, I've heard you say the Jews, God's chosen people, they are. They still are. They always have been. They always will be. But they have been, there has been generation after generation after generation after generation of the Jews just like everyone else. And those generations all played the fool with their eternal destiny and are eternally bound for an eternal hell. Because they played the fool. Now, there'll be a remnant of the Jewish race. If you don't believe it, you read seventh chapter of the book of Revelation, we know 144,000 of them are going to be saved because they're sealed in the seventh chapter of the book of Revelation. But they're, some of them are probably living now. But they most certainly played the fool. What about Judas? No one was ever more favored than Judas. No one had ever more opportunities to be saved and to receive Christ than Judas did. He was chosen as one of the twelve who was very intimate with Christ. With him most all the time with the exception when he'd withdraw from them so that he could be alone with the Father. <coughs> And yet, we're told in Matthew 26, verses 14 to 16, that Judas is camp, one of twelve, went to the priests, high priests, and the elders, and he said, What will you give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver. And from that time, he sought opportunity to betray Jesus. If anybody ever played the fool, it was Judas. He knew all about Jesus. He had seen our Lord Jesus raise men from the dead. He had seen him raise a child from the dead. He had seen him heal people with all manner of diseases. He caused the blind to see. He caused the deaf to hear. Those who were tongue-tied, he loosed their tongues and they could speak. Judas saw all this. And yet because of his desire for $52.80, he betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ who bought him with his own blood. And he played the fool. <coughs> and I'll tell you right now, anyone, I don't care who they are, 
So here's the gospel preached. Who is convicted by the Holy Spirit that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And that he also is the Savior of men. And they're convicted of that great truth. And they turn their backs on the Son of God. They're playing the fool with their eternal destiny. You think, well, Saul surely was a fool, but take a look at humanity today. All right. I want to show you that the Bible points out in many ways how that men play the fool with their destiny. Those who trust in their own wisdom absolutely are playing the fool if they trust in their own wisdom. Romans, the first chapter, verse 21 through 23. Because back when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were faithful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Man, when he knew God, glorified him not as God, but became vain in their imagination. Their foolish heart was darkened. And verse 22 says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And what did they become? Idol worshipers. Change the glory of the incorruptible God to corruptible things as uh, men, images of men, and also he says to birds, images of birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things, and worship them. They played the fool by trusting in their own wisdom, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, is what verse 22 says. So anytime someone trusts in his own wisdom, rather than seeking the wisdom of God, they become fools according to the word of God. Now in Proverbs 28, 26, the Bible simply says, he that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. The heart will deceive. We know that. The heart will deceive man. So he that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, is what the Bible tells us. We need to seek out the will of God. All right, those who make a mockery of sin, the Bible says, is a fool. Proverbs 14 and 9 tells us that the fool hath made a mark of sin. Proverbs 13 and 20 tells us that he that walketh with the wise shall be wise. But the command companion of fools shall be destroyed. If a man associates with people who have been made wise through Jesus Christ, there's a good opportunity for them and a pretty good indication that they will become wise themselves in the knowledge of God. But as long as they are the companions of fools, they're on the road to destruction. As the companions of fools. Now, you say, Brother Hank, you're calling a lot of people fools. No, I'm not. God is. I know that the Bible tells me not to call a man a fool. But if God calls him a fool, he must be a fool. And I've given you scriptures for everything I've told you. So I'm not accusing anybody of being a fool. God is. And if God 
does it in his book. I am duty bound to preach it and not try to twist it around and pat people on the back and say, oh, this doesn't mean you. Yes, it does mean you. If we're guilty of what we have been talking about. Well, that's what about those who live for this present world and never give God a thought. In Luke, the 12th chapter, verses 16 through 21, we're told about a man who just lived strictly for this world and his riches that came to him through God. But he never gave God a thought. The Bible tells us there, and Jesus spake this parable unto them. The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully, and he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? For I have no room where to bestow my fruits. Now this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take that easy, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool. Again, God says you're a fool, doesn't he? Anyone who does that, he was a fool in a lot of respects. In fact, he was a fool because he was so anxious in the midst of plenty. So much fruit that God gave him that he didn't even have the room to bestow it. So he says, I, I won't share it with anybody. I'll pile it up. I'll stockpile it. I'll pull down these barns and I'll build great barns and hold all of my fruits and my goods. And everything was his, too. He was a fool in that respect. Everything was his. My barns, my goods, my fruits, my soul. I will say to my soul when the word of God says all souls are mine. This day, God says, you're a fool. This night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? He provided. He was a fool in this respect. He evidently didn't even have an heir to leave all that stuff to. Otherwise, God wouldn't have said, then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? God says, the man was a fool because he was living for the world and all that he could get out of the world rather than living for God or giving God any glory at all. God had given him a bumper car. And he thought he got it all by himself. He was a fool. Well, that's what about those who find it convenient to continue continually delay coming to Christ. Putting it on, procrastinating. They sure plain food. In Acts 24, chapter and verse 25, we have a picture of a man there who plays a fool by putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. Paul, the apostle, was witnessing to Felix and Drusilla, his wife, who was a Jewess. Verse 25 of Acts 24 says, As Paul reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time, but I have a convenient season that I will call for thee. When I have a convenient season, I want to put it off for a while yet. I don't want to do it. I really do want to be saved. But I don't want to do it today. I don't want my friends laughing at me. I don't want them calling me sissy. You know, a lot of teenagers, especially teenage boys, get the idea that God uh, wants sissies. But God doesn't want sissies. God wants men. And if you want a boy to grow up in a hurry and let him become a man quick, let him cut Christ. 
go from a bullet to a man, he'll do